Pfizer announced that its COVID-19 vaccine is safe and strongly protective in kids as young as 12, a step toward possibly beginning shots in this age group before they head back to school in the fall. Most COVID-19 vaccines being rolled out worldwide are for adults who are at higher risk from the coronavirus. Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech in the coming weeks plan to ask the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and European regulators to allow emergency use of the shots starting at age 12. One key, one key question is the dosage. Pfizer gave the 12 and older participants the same dose adults receive while testing different dosages in younger children. It's not clear how quickly the FDA would act on Pfizer's request to allow vaccination starting at age 12. The agency has taken about three weeks to review and authorize each of the vaccines currently available for adults. Another question is when the country would have enough supplies of shots and people to get them into adolescents' arms to let kids starting, start getting in line. Supplies are set to steady, steadily increase over the spring and summer. At the same time, states are opening vaccinations to younger, healthier adults who until now haven't had a term. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, 260 children have died from COVID-19. That's more deaths in an average year than child deaths from the flu. So, will you or won't you get vaccinated? Uh, I think it's pretty important to like get everything back to normal and functioning properly. Yes, I am. Why? I just feel a lot safer with it because my family has had COVID and we don't want to experience all that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Why? Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no clue. Um, the vaccine is a great form of medicine, but it hasn't really been out so that long, so I'm kind of weighing my options still. Why? Uh, I, I know a couple of people that got it, and they said that it was really good, uh, and that they were sore for a couple of days, and then it was fine to go, no side effects, but I just want to wait a tad bit longer before I get it. Maybe a few weeks, see how it plays out with a few other people. Yeah. Why? Because both of my parents got it in their volunteer firehouse. No. Why not? I don't know. With summer coming just around the corner, everybody is ready to go to the beach. In Maryland, the place to be is Ocean City, of course, but I'm here to tell you that your local beaches are almost just as good. I asked around to see what beaches were favorited in Lesby, and here's what I found out. Ranked from most liked to least, we have Drum Point, Seahorse, and lastly, and also leastly, is Lake Lariat. Today I went around to each of these beaches and gave them my personal rating. I rated them on three main points. Number one, beach quality. Two, attractions. And three is the accessibility. First on the list, Drum Point Beach. Hope you enjoy. All right, what's up? We're here, we're at Drum Point Beach. Soaking in the sun, getting them tan lines going. All right, let's get to rating. Starting off with beach quality. Not looking too hot, Drum Point. Let's check out the sand. is pretty good. Aside from a few pine cones here and there, I'll give it a 7 out of 10 for beach quality. Alright, moving on to the beach attractions. For the main one, we got tanner marker number 4 over there. Great for a semi-legal diving board. If you're feeling frisky, it's a little cold out here right now. But uh, you do you. Alright, for the attraction number 2, we got the dock behind me. Logan, what do you think about Drum Point Beach? I think it's a great place to come. It's a great place to come if you want to go fishing, if you want to enjoy your place with the family, if you just want to have fun at the beach, definitely come to Drum Point Beach. All right, out of 10, what, what would you give it? I would give it a 9.7 out of 10. 9.7? The only thing right. that's only bad about this beach, actually, honestly, Anthony, there's nothing bad about this beach. The only thing that, that, that takes the point three off is these people. Those people right there. Those people take the point three out okay. of it. All right, last on the list, we got accessibility. 
In order to come to this beach, you gotta be a resident or have a resident with you of Drum Point. So for accessibility, we're gonna give it a six out of 10. Overall, seven out of 10 for beach quality, 9.7 out of 10 for attractions, according to Logan Scruggs, and a six out of 10 for accessibility, Drum Point, 7.6 out of 10, on to the next. Here we are, Seahorse Beach in the CRE, the Ranch Club, and I'm here to tell you what I think. Sand quality here is a little better than Drum Point. It's a little thinner, easier on the toes, and there's not a lot of sticks and uh, pine cones everywhere, so I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. All right, for the attractions, we got basketball hoop, pretty crappy volleyball net over there. Then we got a lake here. You can fish if you want to. And a picnic table behind. Pretty crappy, but it's chained to the tree, so you can't steal it. For the attractions, uh, we'll give it a seven out of 10. For accessibility, uh, you do need to be a resident of the ranch club. Get yourself one of these bad boys, a little CRE pass, or uh, have a friend. Accessibility, uh, we'll go six out of 10, about the same as drum point. All right, overall for Seahorse Beach, we got a uh, eight out of 10 for beach quality, pretty good. Seven out of 10 for the attractions and a six out of 10 for the uh, accessibility, which puts Seahorse Beach at a seven out of 10 average. On to the next. Last on the list, Lake Lariat. I don't even want to be here right now, so I'm gonna make it short and sweet. All right, number one, beach quality. I just saw a vulture and there's geese poop everywhere. I don't even want to go down to the sand because I don't want to get a terminal illness. Two out of 10 for beach quality. For the attractions, we're doing pretty good. We got a nice swing set. Basketball hoop over there, full court. Both of the hoops have nets. Playground behind me. Uh, I'm gonna give the attractions a nine out of 10. Pretty good, Lake Larry. All right, last on the list, we got accessibility. Same thing, you need to be a resident to CRE, the good old ranch club, six out of 10. Okay, overall rating of Lake Lariat, this place sucks. It's almost comparable to its own trash cans. I hate this place and I wanna go home. Please stop watching. Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul on June 6th. What? It's going to be a very interesting fight. Two very different types of fighters that come from two very different backgrounds. Floyd Mayweather has been a professional fighter for over 25 years. And Logan Paul, a very successful content creator, has been fighting for about two years. Logan Paul is the MGM odds favorite at plus 2,000 and Floyd Mayweather is at negative 100,000. So, if you bet $100,000 on Mayweather winning, you would only get $100 back. Floyd Mayweather's type of fighting is fast and very agile, but he is shorter than Logan, so being able to get a nice headshot on him will be a difficult challenge. Logan, on the other hand, I think has a better chance of winning. He is a powerful boxer, and if he lands a good square punch on Mayweather, I think he would be in some deep trouble. Logan is also 50 pounds heavier than Mayweather so he won't go down so easily with just one punch to the abs. If I was betting on this fight, even with Mayweather's experience, I will still put a butt on Logan Paul to win the fight. I can't believe this. What the heck is Mr. McMahon thinking? With the superhero genre exploding in popularity over the past decade, our recent trend has begun to pick up as well. This could be considered a subgenre of superheroes as it takes the superheroes we love to watch and reflects them in a darker, often more realistic light. There have been around three of these types of shows over the past few years, but the most recent one has been Amazon Prime's Invincible. A comic written by Robert Kirkman, the writer and executive producer of The Walking Dead, Invincible is not as dark and gritty as some of the other shows in what I'll be calling the adult superhero genre. Instead, Invincible is in this genre due to the extreme amounts of violence and realism that is taken under consideration when these fictional beings are put into realistic situations. Consider this a warning. Invincible is extremely violent and rated TVMA for a good reason. 
The show follows the story of Mark Grayson, an average 17-year-old high school student whose alien father is the most powerful superhero on the planet. Mark develops his powers and begins to learn how to become a superhero from his father and other superheroes that he meets, while he tries to figure out what kind of superhero he wants to be. Mark takes the name Invincible because he is Invincible, a bold claim that is challenged many times over the first season. Along with his quote-unquote invincibility, Mark is also super strong, has super speed, and can fly. Another great show that fits in the adult superhero genre, The Boys, while having some of the same themes as Invincible, is more about how superpowers would corrupt people. Invincible is more about what it's like from the superhero's perspective and how not everything works out perfectly all the time just because they came to save the day. It's also packed to the brim with references to other superhero media and characters. Invincible just wrapped up its 8 episode first season on Amazon Prime Video, so check it out if you want to see the beginning of one of the coolest superhero stories of the past few years. I don't think there's a shred of doubt in anyone's mind that this last school year has been the craziest school year ever. From cutting off school completely for two weeks to starting a brand new school year miles away from any school, we have been in for a wild ride. The people most affected by this shift, however, has to be the 2021 seniors. Not only were they affected by the weird teaching method of the last school year, soiling their junior year, they have received one of the most underwhelming farewells to the public schooling system. As a first-hand witness to these events, being a senior myself, I can say that this year did not live up to the expectations set throughout my life. Instead of enjoying all the positives of being a senior, we have been sitting in front of our computer screens doing homework four days a week or sitting in socially distanced classes with a teacher forced to teach in-person students as well as virtual ones. This year has gone by faster than ever and doesn't feel special or like we are about to be thrust into an adult world full of responsibilities. The best we can do now is try and stay for the moments of our senior year. And here are some ways we can do so. The first and most obvious thing you can do is to make the year special yourself. Get excited and attend up and coming events. Despite the pandemic, some major senior events are still happening, such as prom and graduation. These are big moments, so make sure you have a good time. Another relatively easy thing you can do to still make your senior year special is buying the yearbook. A yearbook will likely stay with you for many years and you can look back upon your high school years with nostalgia or hate. I think most high schoolers agree the best thing about high school isn't the free graduation, but rather the friends you get to see every day. If it is safe to do so, another thing you can do before the end of the school year is hang out with your friends. Seniors haven't been dealt a great hand this school year, so try and make the most out of it while you still can. If you are interested by the unexplained paranormal activity and unsolved mysteries, this story is for you. In 1927, during the Great Depression, the Cecil Hotel opened. Great timing, right? Anyway, the city of Los Angeles made the decision to use the newly opened hotel as a transitional housing for World War II veterans who weren't ready to go home to their families due to things like PTSD. In the first year, over 1,300 veterans stayed at the Cecil Hotel. They were not given access to any doctors, interventions, and specialists. Nothing. They, they could come and go as they pleased, but most residents were not ready to go out in the society successfully. Richie, Richie Ramirez and Jack Unterwanger are two notables who would use the Cecil as their hideaway after killing in the community. Several, several vet, veterans staying at the Cecil chose to take their own lives too. Definitely a weird place. It gained attention in 2013 when USC student Elisa Lamb was thrown out by her roommates and sought refuge at the Cecil ho Hotel. Then she went missing for two weeks. Eventually, CNN published footage her showing her frantically rushing into the elevator, pressing all the buttons, and walking in and out like she was talking to somebody. Weird. A couple weeks after her disappearance, guests at the Cecil Hotel complained about the looks and taste of their water. With the case open, investigators decided to check the water towers of the hotel and found her body. Whoa. 
Some fellow YouTubers like Chris Starr, Joey Official, and Jake Weber all went to the hotel to investigate what actually happened to Elisa Lam. And what they got on their spirit box session was chilling. Well, I hope you guys learned of the history about the Cecil Hotel. I know I did, and it's very interesting.